Mario Kazar. I think he was a uh, he made he made Terminator too. I think or helped. Sylvester Stallone in First Blood. It wasn't even called Rambo yet. Based on a novel. Oh look, Sylvester Stallone helped with the uh, write write the story, the screenplay. Uh, my name is John Rambo. We served on the same team together in Nam. I don't know if you ever talked John about Rambo. I've, I've got a picture uh, of us together. Dale Ma's gone. Uh, when, what time will he be back? He died. What? Oh, man. Died last summer. Died how? Cancer. Brought it back from Nam. That's a real thing. I don't want stuff that spread it around. Yeah, uh, Agent Agent Orange. I think the worst uh, American soldier that ever go through it, to ever go through it, you know, through war, gotta be the Vietnam vets, man. In that war, they encountered more enemies than any other war. You know, every time they were uh, on patrol or just searching for the enemy. Morning, Dave. You know, wearing that flag on that jacket, looking the way you do, you're asking for trouble around here, friend. The hell's wrong with wearing a uh, flag on your jacket? I jump in. I'll make sure you're heading the right direction. Huh? Oh, he does get inside. I thought he just kept walking. You got some place I can eat around here? There's a diner about 30 miles up the highway. Is there any law against me getting something here? Yeah, me. Oh, here we go. Why are you pushing me? If you want some friendly advice, the haircut and take a bath. You wouldn't get hassled so much. <laughs> take a bath. Right, help you out. Huh. He said, I'm right back. Let me see some ID. All right, you're under arrest. Now, you're going to put your hands on that car. How do you do it? You decide right now. That's straight harassment right there, man. He didn't do nothing wrong. Well, what do we have here, huh? Ah, damn. Why would you be carrying a knife like this? Big ass crocodile Dundee knife. What do you got? I want you to book this gentleman for vagrancy, resisting arrest, carrying a concealed weapon. He says he uses vagrancy. <laughs> Your name. Oh, man. Having flashbacks. Hey, you got three seconds before I break your face in. He means it. Yeah. <laughs> he means it. Roll it. Roll it across. Oh, man. Push it. It won't work that way. It'll only smear. Now roll it across. Look, you son of a bitch. If you don't put your goddamn hand down there, I'm going to break it off. <laughs> down, goddammit. Now, we're going to make you a little bit more presentable for your courtroom appearance. Between now and then, you can just impress the hell out of me by doing exactly as you're told. They really don't like him. I clean him up. Oh, Christ. Man. We should report this to Teasel, Galt. Look at that. Yeah, a bunch of scars. What I tell you? <clears throat> Galt, what the fuck was that? Well, a man said clean him up. He probably did that right there in the shower because there's no camera. Even back then, they probably had a camera. Hey, Preston! Sit down. Oh, Sounds like we just picked the hard way. Come on. Yeah, those flashbacks. Like, way traumatized, man. Or what is it called? PTFD? I don't want you to catch your own throat. Man. Oh. Here we go. What the hell is 
<laughs> what the hell is out the window? Got a motorcycle or a dirt bike. <laughs> Damn. Definitely knows how to handle that thing. Oh, it's over for that car. <laughs> Little trivia from IMDB. It says the large piece of rotten canvas that Rambo finds in the woods and cuts into a makeshift coat was in fact not a movie prop, man, but a real piece of rotten canvas found by the film crew during the during the movie's production. Sylvester Stallone still has that rotten canvas to this very day. He's rock climbing now. Jesus. No way he's gonna jump. What? To the water? Oh, right on the tree. Oh! Oh, man. That was a good throw. Yeah, he's dead. Really dead. Take his clothes, man. Oh, no, no, no. Shh. That's your boy. What? He's gonna throw himself back up? Oh, that looks real, too. You really didn't. I didn't do anything. Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! I can't shoot for nothing. In the novel, Rambo was in the Korean War, not the Vietnam War. Sylvester Stallone accidentally broke the nose of Lester during the jail escape, which is why you see him with a bandaid on his nose throughout the rest of the movie. The original movie was three hours long, and Sylvester Stallone hated it, so they cut it down as much as possible. Wow. This came over the teletype a few minutes ago. John Rambo is a Vietnam vet. He's a Green Beret, Congressional Medal Oh, Honor. man. The guy's a war hero. Jesus, that freak. I knew there was something about that guy. Green Beret. Yep. War hero. That's great. That's Why don't you just shut your great. mouth? <laughs> Those green berets. They're real badasses. Why don't you let's take <laughs> No, he's getting ready. Putting all that training to you. Go get them, sweethearts. There's your dinner. Oh. He shot the dog. Oh, the decoy. Damn scarecrow! No scarecrow to shot Orville. He's close. He's real close. No, he's gonna get shot too. Well, stabbed. We ain't hunting him. He's hunting us. He's hunting us. Oh, oh, got him. This guy, man. What the hell's going on? It was like he was raised in the wood. Oh, booby trap. And one by one, getting all of them. In Vietnam, I read they used to put they used to put poop 
at the end of those fights to get to get infected. So you'll really die. Whoa! Oh, it's over now. I could have killed them all. I could have killed you. True. Been telling you the law. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. Woo, man! Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> I want to cry. But he's gonna meet his maker. So in the book, he's a real lunatic. But Sylvester wanted to make him into a more likable character. So I guess he was a cold-blooded killer in the original story. During the filming of the movie, a truck used to store 50-odd firearms imported, in, imported into Canada for filming was stolen along with the content. Man. The author of the original book stated that he prefers this film over his novel. Jesus. Al Pacino was considered for the role of John Rambo. Nah, that wouldn't have worked. Only their skill training and police enforcement techniques saved their lives. And word now is... Yeah, the right. Will be in custody he spared them. Yeah, yeah, he does have the band-aid. He really broke his nose, man. Sam Trotman. Colonel Samuel Trotman. Look, we're a little busy this morning, Colonel. What can I do for you? I've come to get my boy. <laughs> my boy. I recruited him. I trained him. I commanded him in Vietnam for three years. I'd say that makes him mine. I wonder why the <laughs> Pentagon would... I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. Oh. You don't seem to want to accept the fact that you're dealing with an expert in guerrilla warfare. With a man who's the best. With guns, with knives, with his bare hands. A man who's been trained to ignore pain. Ignore weather. To live off the land. To eat things and to make a billy goat puke. <laughs> had... Billy goat puke, man. I read somewhere that they stopped doing that. Where part of your training was to eat bugs and all kind of nasty stuff. And it didn't work. Even when someone's starving and their, their stomach won't accept it, they'll throw up. Even if they're starving. That's crazy. He got himself some dinner. We're just a small hick town sheriff's department, Colonel, but we're expected to do our duty just like our heroes in the special forces. In special forces, we teach our people to stay alive in the line of duty. No shit. I never thought of that. You want a war? You can't win. <laughs> you this fucking guy. I like their uh, back and forth. No-win situation for us. You send that money. Don't forget one thing. What? A good supply of body bags. Man. I wonder if that hog tastes good. Maybe you can talk him into sparing all our lives by giving himself up. <laughs> you know he's being sarcastic. I can try. Well, look, John, we can't have you running around out there wasting friendly civilians. There are no friendly civilians. There ain't no friendly civilian. Seems like bailing you out of trouble is going to be a lifetime job for me. There wouldn't be no trouble except for that king shit cup. <laughs> well, you did some pushing on your own, John. They drew first blood, not me. Look, ha, first blood. Let me come in and get you the hell out of there. Got a whole army to get him. Look at that. <laughs> Little kid. <laughs> We're gonna go snitch. Yeah. <laughs> Surround the area with every man you've got, but don't move in. I repeat, don't move in. In fact, don't do anything till I get there. And no shooting. I don't want him dead. I want him alive. Yeah, no shooting. Come on, guys, shoot. Come on. We're scared. Oh, you guys are great. All right, Steve. Yo. I want you and Bruce head around these trees. Go to the front of that mine. Screw that, Clinton. I ain't going up there. <laughs> what are all these guys like? National Guard? This is Lieutenant Clinton Morgan. National Guard leader. Yeah, there you go. National Guard. Who's got the rocket launcher? I do. 
Come here, Earl. A rocket launcher. Earl, this creep is a killer. Besides, I'm in charge, and I say we blow it up. Now fire that thing. Just let me get out of the way first. <laughs> Better run. Yeah. What if he drink though? They never explained that. Can't be that river water. How you doing, Will? It's around Christmas time, so does that make it a Christmas movie? He got rats on his back. Oh. If one of those rats would have bit him or scratched him, that would have been it. I mean, what would you have done with him if he came in? Would you wrap your arms around him, give him a big sloppy kiss? <laughs> would you have blown his brains out? Oh. They're right there. <laughs> Looks like somebody pulled the plug too soon. That Rambo guy is on the loose again. Uh -huh. This is Trapper. We're setting up roadblocks on Highway 26. Hey, Will, it, it's Rambo. He's still around. The pit maneuver. Against the cop. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. He's back in town. Man, all that ammo and weapons and stuff. Boom. Damn, the whole gas station. It's terrorizing that whole town. Remain indoors until you receive further instructions. I repeat. The one man doing all that. You knew he was still alive, didn't you? You sure did. I suspect it. Ah, now the whole town's dark. Yeah, he found him. <laughs> He's scared as hell. Oh, shot him. <laughs> you crazy son of a bitch, Finn. Rambo! <laughs> Rambo, don't do it. There are nearly 200 men out there and a lot of M16s. You did everything to make this private war happen. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just <laughs> don't turn it off! That's it right. It was my war! And I did what I had to do to win! But somebody wouldn't let us win! And I come back to the world! And I see all those maggots at the airport! Protesting me, spitting! Calling me baby killer and all kinds of vile crap! Yeah. That was the real Who thing. Who protest me, huh? Who are they? Unless they've been me and been there and know what the hell they're yelling about! Back there I can fly a gunship. I can drive a tank. I was in charge of million dollar equipment. Back here, I can't even hold a job. Fucking guys! Man. That's how it really was for a lot of vets, man. 
kind of still is a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like his dad. No matter how much you train someone and all that, they're still human. It can only take so much. It's a long so rap. That's it. When you're now it's really over. I know it's like a part two, but I wonder what happened to him. Military prison, regular prison. All right. So from one to ten, it's definitely getting a solid ten. I like that it's an hour and a half. There's a lot of action, but it's not all about that. We get um dialogue that's very important to the movie. It ain't just a bunch of fillers and just to make it a two-hour movie. Sylvester Stallone should have got nominated or something. He was really damn good. You believe he was a Vietnam vet for real. So I do I recommend it? Hell yeah. Could I watch it again? Yep, absolutely. Catch you on the next one. Counterfeiting is a billion dollar business perpetrated by thousands of people throughout the world. Meet Kimo, one of those people. Kimo is a young man from the most dangerous city in America. After losing his job, he ventures into the risky business of counterfeiting to help relocate his family to a better place.